let's go for a drive okay so i'm on ons today and we are heading towards the lamba ness peninsula and so that's actually the launch site of the new spaceport in the shetland islands i'm going to be learning a little bit about what that means for ons today you can see it just up ahead time to get out of the car and get a little bit of a closer look such an absolutely beautiful part of the world and there you have it that's it the future spaceport Welcome to the most northerly beach in the UK. Uh, behind us we have Lamba Ness Peninsula, the future site of Saxovord Spaceport. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the bunker out here is going to be the future site of the Lockheed Martin uh, Pioneer rockets, which will send rockets 20,000 kilometers into space. So we're in the RAF building. Um, Frank, Strain, and Debbie um, originally bought this because what they what they usually or what they do is they um, buy old like military properties, old historical sites, try to restore them and turn them into like heritage sites for people to visit. And so they came onto this property, um, started revitalizing it. We're in the old officers' uh, bar right now. They kind of recreated and put it back together. It was a, a cafe next door and then the bar area here. And then they set up a resort with the whole idea that if tour buses come this far north, there's enough places for the entire bus to stay. You visit the community, you go see birds, you do. Now we have the gin distillery that uh, we own. Um, and you just be a part of it. But then around 20, 2015, 2016, the UK government did a survey of places to launch rockets in the UK, and it just happened to be that the land right out from us uh, was the best place in the entire UK to launch a vertical rocket. So we did a pivot in 2017 towards being more of a, a spaceport. And so we're all learning, but it's an interesting journey because the expertise on running and launching rockets in the UK was really not there. So we're all having to learn as we go and we share and the, the government relies on us a lot as the only pri fully private spaceport to kind of drive uh, some regulation, but in the same sense as we share with other spaceports. And though we're all businesses, if you will, we, we work together a lot because Scotland and the UK have more than enough opportunity for all of us. And even if we're all operating at 150%, we're not gonna even make a dent in what the market really needs. So the opportunity's here, so. Once we get planning, touch wood, uh, we should be breaking ground in the next few weeks and launching rockets within the next few months. Okay, and where, where does Scotland sit within the international like a space, space yeah. community? Where does that sound? So Scotland, it's interesting because I, I found this job on a whim, didn't even realize that there was a Scotland space industry. Uh, but the more research I've done, uh, and I think that's part of my job as the education officer is not only to educate the future generations of space, but to um, get the word out there that there's high, um, high impact, high level jobs for everyone here. We've got more than enough 
now it's just convincing people that the opportunity's there. But uh, uh, a good stat that I always love to, to bring out is more satellites are built in Glasgow than anywhere else in the world except for Southern California. Now they're all the little nano and micro and they look at weather changes and um, they look at climate change and they provide uh, telecommunications from space, but they're built there. And then Edinburgh is one of the leaders, if not the leaders, of companies that process data from space. So already in the Scottish space sector, we have produced more satellites than almost anywhere else, and we process more data than anywhere else, but there was never a means for putting rockets up. I mean, you, you look at the, uh, the James Webb telescope that just was sent up by the European Space Agency um, a few weeks ago, and though they launched it from, quote, Europe, it was French Guiana, so they shipped the entire rocket and everything down to South America, launched out from the European spaceport, and sent it up. So by having the facility here in the middle of nowhere, we can shoot directly north, and there's nothing past until you get to the North Pole and beyond. So it provides a lot of opportunity of growth for bigger size rockets and facilities to go. And people say that the wind could be an issue, but really it's only the few months in the winter when it's really windy. and. If you think about most rockets are built on that technology of intercontinental ballistic missiles, mm -hmm. those are designed to be launched in hurricanes if needed. So from a safety standpoint, we won't launch if the conditions aren't right, but it's not a fear that weather up here, because it can be so different, is going to have that much of a detrimental impact. Okay. When is the first launch then, or when is the proposal? <sighs> so if all goes well, we are going to do some test launches to test all of our um, uh, operations uh, late spring uh, but we're working really hard to be good neighbors with all of this too because all of the spaceports that are in the UK could easily go in say look under interest of national security we could put up an iron curtain shut down everything and do whatever we want without planning but we're trying to be all of us are trying to be green sustainable and community partners uh, Cornwall uh, Snowdonia us everyone so we, we actually shut down for bird nesting season and lamb rearing season as well because we want to make sure that we're a value member of the community. So with that being said, we probably could have launched earlier, but our launches are going to be pushed back into July, August, and then uh, autumn um, purely because we want to make sure that we don't disrupt the, the importance of the, the endangered species and birds and livelihoods of the crofters and everything in the area. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. And you have a, a dedicated uh, sustainability officer. Yeah, yeah. right now we have Sorsha Levy, um, who unfortunately is down in London right now. Um, but uh, she's the first ever sustainability officer of a spaceport, a private spaceport. Um, NASA probably has someone equivalent, but so she's really leading the industry and we're taking a point on building like a ranking system that shows sustainability of spaceports with various factors to put in and show opportunity, not only for ourselves, but we work really in strong partnership with a few other spaceports and we share that data so we all can figure out better ways to to approach uh, like the COP26 and the net zero mm -hmm. um, yeah. goals. Okay, and so I guess as someone who's quite naive to the, the space industry, I wonder what are the rockets doing there and what is the, the purpose of them? Yeah, so by launching from Scotland, Scotland's a really great area because uh, across the board because we launch in a polar orbit so we go from the poles to the poles around as opposed to the equator and that allows us to have almost zero latency for uh, Africa and Australia from this vantage point and so with that that means you could watch climate change or changes in environment in Australia or Africa and then eventually even provide high-speed internet 3G or 5G uh, connections for those areas that you know, traditionally are so remote that it just, they don't have some opportunities that places that are hyper-connected to the world. Uh, so just bringing that opportunity or that, that longer term opportunity, I think is going to be amazing. Um, so then when there's wildfires in Australia, we just pull up a satellite link and we can track it without having to put helicopters or spotters out in the field and yeah. kind of see how it changes. So okay. yeah, that's, and then we're, we're doing two different kinds of launches. We're doing suborbital, which goes up to uh, a lower altitude, and those satellites have a, a shorter lifespan, but they'll, they're designed to burn up on re-entry, so it 
cleans up after itself basically and um, so it doesn't leave junk in space and then we're even looking at uh, working with a company that does wooden satellites so basically it does its thing it comes back down and it's done and then we have orbital that goes way far up that can do bigger positioning tracking and different kind of things so okay yeah so what's your role within this it's work that's yeah. brought you to the islands what it's, do you do within this um well, like, like most people that have met at the islands, uh, you either come up for work that's like a skilled work or you're running from something or somewhere in between. Uh, maybe I'm running from the world, but I, I think what I really appreciate, especially what the space industry is offering Scotland as a whole, not just here, is we're, we're doing very meaningful work that's very interconnected with the world, but we can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So though it's in the middle of nowhere, we're... I, working with governments and officials and educators all over the world all the time just like it would be if I was sitting in central London without the rent. Um, but I, I came up here so I'm the education officer for Saxon Board and for me it's about building an educational pathway where STEAM education so STEM plus the arts because to me and to our company arts are huge. I come from a very artistic family so that's always going to be part of what I do and what I push for our strategy, um, but it's inspiring anyone from age one to 101 and then giving them the tools and the connections to, to learn and grow in space. And so we're working on building a curriculum excellence kind of program that can help track someone through preschool and age two or three, all the way through cycles, six different cycles that gets them up to either doing an apprenticeship or going to university, college, or uh, retraining someone who might come from a different industry that as as we switch away from uh, fossil fuels that might be a, a direction that we need to do here so it's everything in between but then success for me I've, I've put two key performance indicators on myself and one is to find that six seven eight year old that is just enamored with space grow them up through tracking and helping them learn about space as they progress and then eventually in 10 15 20 years they're the one here pressing the button and likewise, I like to say that I would love to, to work with someone from the community, like Unst or Yale or Fettler, somewhere in the, the Northern Isles to teach them kind of what we do, help them grow through academia and apprenticeships and those hands-on. And if in 10, 15, 20 years they make me redundant, I feel like my job here has had a, an impact. Not that I want to leave, but I feel like we've done a good job if we've gotten to that point that we provided the specialty kind of opportunities for the community uh, over time. So. Okay, so kind of integrating uh, local people into yeah. this, uh, into Saxon Do a lot of local people work in Saxon at the moment? Uh, most of the staff, I'm, Sorsha and I are the only ones who don't have had no ties to the area. Everyone's always had kind of either ties to the area, whether it was the military or family from the, the region. Um, but one of the biggest concerns when I'm doing stuff in the community, because we're always out in the community playing in sports in the leisure center, knitting with the, the ladies at the community center, just those fun things. But the biggest concern I always hear is we don't want our kids sweeping floors and cleaning toilets. We want meaningful opportunities. And that's what both Sorsha and I are here to do, is to ensure that we provide those opportunities. And it seems the vast majority of the community is behind us, but because planning has taken so long and we've had so many ups and downs over the, the years, that there's a hesitancy that's gonna happen. So once we get planning done, I think we'll see this take off, every pun intended, uh, really quickly. But uh, until that point, we're all just kind of nervously sitting on our, our toes, but sustainability and education don't stop. So we can do all of this work. We're already pulling a lot of satellite data down now uh, which provides a lot of high-tech uh, data analysis positions that we're looking to try to, to grow an apprenticeship. And I'm driving that we're being a part of the uh, Young Persons Guarantee, so we're going to make sure that we always have opportunities for 16 to 24-year-olds and apprenticeship opportunities. So, And those are all going to be focused on either kids that are here now on the island or if they've went off to university to show that they can come back and there's... A position or there's something for them that they can actually make a livelihood. We're growing and we're going to be growing up here and bringing more people like the old RAF base was back alive which I think is going to bring a lot of opportunity not just to people who work for the spaceport but the community around the spaceport 
and a lot of businesses that are struggling to hold on and people struggling to hold on, I think we'll have some opportunity because we'll just have the people up here and doing stuff. We're heading to the airport now where the antenna is based and this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. So if you want, so this is why I wanted to come down. So it's moving really slowly, but we've got a sort of satellite skimming the uh, sovereignly pass going west at the moment. Okay. So this is the 3.7 meter parabolic um, X and Y axis dish, which means basically it can rotate in every angle. And what's quite unique about this antenna and um, some others is uh, it has no keyhole, which is a phrase that we use for Zenith, where Basically, if a satellite passes directly overhead, so uh, polar uh, in, a, in a polar orbit, some satellites aren't able to, uh, some antennas, sorry, aren't able to um, rotate themselves in, in, a, in a way that allows them to get to zero or zenith. Okay. Um, so, with some clever uh, servo motors and design, uh, this antenna can. So, if a satellite does pass overhead, we aren't going to miss a pass, potentially lose satellite data. And, and we can support. It looks like it's moving really slowly, <laughs> and, 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 and it is, but um, yeah, uh, you know, the satellite is moving really fast in space. Okay, because you can barely see any movement. <laughs> but yeah. that's the distance too, like it's moving fast up there, but by the time we've seen here. That's it, it's just slowly, slowly tracking. We can send you the, uh, so we've got some cameras inside to monitor and just make sure remotely that everything's working, you know, the, the sort of virtual switch on and off. Yeah. Sort of give it a give it a kick, um, and uh, we can send you a video to show it's sort of moving slightly faster and tracking. But um, this supports uh, S and X band, so frequencies are. If you remember in the good old days, your um, TVs, the sort of antennas you had to maneuver on the outside, working sort of UHF, VHF. As you move up up the frequency bands, the like some 5G, 4G signal that you get on your phones now are, are, are similar to this uh, and, and this antenna works in S and X band which is so the 2.4 gigahertz um, which is much like Wi-Fi uh, but in a slightly specific frequency band and X band so uh, as you move up the frequencies the more data you can move down because the, the more bandwidth that it can take so a lot of the earth observation satellites now are in the sort of X band going up to KA and, and above uh, to, to bring down more data faster um, because they're, they're just ingesting so much now in, in, in orbit. So what are you about to do now then? Uh, like right now? Yeah. Um, not much since, it's, uh, since we're sort of in a, in a couple of tracks so for the next sort of two hours this entire will be quite busy. Um, this morning we came down to do some maintenance and just check on everything. Weather that we've had, but um, uh, we'll let it do what it needs to do um, for, for now and uh, come back maybe later on. So, today I learned a little bit about the Saxoward Space Station and the sorts of things they're going to be doing here in Unst. I'd love to hear what you think, you know, what sort of uh, questions you have, and do you think it's a good thing that we're going to have a commercial space station here on Unst?